Good afternoon YouTube. Today is February 16th of 2011 and we're out here in the shop today obviously and I thought I'd make a video for y'all that I've wanted to make for quite a while. And so today that's what I'm going to do. We're going to cover the parts of this torch, how to set it up, how to use it correctly and safely and uh, then we'll start doing a little bit of cutting with it. Uh, it's a lot of fun, it's addicting, I'm a welding student in real life and it's, uh, it really is what I'm passionate about. It's what I eat, breathe, and sleep, you know, even when I'm not at school. And it's, it's kind of my thing, which is, it's a really good hobby, but it is very dangerous. Uh, I'm told that if a set like this were to go up, like in a barn fire or something, they'd hear it over 10 miles away. And acetylene, the flammable gas here, and the thing in the short black cylinder, is a highly unstable gas that's somewhat stabilized in there by a, you know, almost as flammable liquid. And this is an oxygen cylinder, and it is compressed to about 2200 psi when it's just been refilled. And I know for a fact, I've seen pictures, that if you set one of these next to a car and knock off this brass valve, it'll go through both sides of the car and keep going. I guess I'm just going to start on one side of my cart and go to the other side. Now the first two things are the cylinders themselves, one's for oxygen, which is generally the tall one, and one's for acetylene, which is generally the short one. However, these uh, rules of thumb do fail, so you always want to be sure to read the, uh, the label on the side, because that'll tell you everything. And you want to make sure these are chained up, because if the oxygen cylinder falls over, and this thing, this brass part up here shears off, that thing is gone like a rocket. And if your acetylene tips over, then, um, well, like I said, this stuff explodes over about 15 PSI, but in the tank, it's stored at approximately 300 PSI. And that's possible because there's a bunch of acetone in the bottom of the tank there, and when you lay the cylinder on its side, that acetone rolls up into that brass fitting and then into your regulator and uh, promptly destroys it. So that's bad, and if you do get one of these on its side, all you have to do is let it sit right side up for a couple days before you attempt to use it. Now, the things attached to the cylinders, that thing there, and that thing there called regulators, one specifically for acetylene and one specifically for oxygen, and the oxygen one has right-handed threads there and there, and the acetylene one has left-handed threads there and there. So, for instance, up here, that's righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, and here, it's vice versa. And the idea behind that is so that you don't accidentally mess up and put the wrong regulator, you know, for the wrong gas. Now, the hose is really important. You want to inspect it. Green generally represents oxygen, and red generally represents acetylene. If there's any cracks or chips or burns or anything in that hose, you'll definitely want to get rid of it. And if you fold it over, like that, and you see any cracks in it, then it's uh, time to get a new hose. Alright, and you always want eye protection with this stuff. And these are Shade 5 glasses. They uh, block out a lot of light, but not nearly as much as electric arc welding, which are normally shades 9 through 13. And over here, we have everyone's favorite thing to play with, which is the striker. Now to get one of these to work, if you just go over it like that, it probably won't. The trick is to put some pressure, you know, in this direction here. And then you'll get a spark pretty much every time. And also you're going to want to be really careful what you're wearing anytime you do any type of welding or cutting or really anything involving fire for that matter. If you're wearing something polyester and it catches fire, it'll actually melt to your skin. And yeah, that, that's just all bad. You can't even really imagine what it's like to have that taken out. And so you want to wear something cotton. I myself am wearing a denim shirt and jeans. Never wear shorts, obviously, and boots because sandals would be very bad. So, uh, well, let's uh, light this thing up. All right, well, now it's time for us to light the torch here. And... Um, I like to start with the oxygen, but I mean, I guess you could start with the acetylene if you wanted to. And this is referred to as the T-screw here, and you never ever want to stand in front of this thing like where my camera is right now. Because should your regulator fail, this thing takes off out of here like a bullet, and it'll go through both sides of you with, you know, hardly any reduction in speed. That sounded dirty. Okay, so anyway, 
We're going to crack this thing open. We're just going to turn it slowly until that happens. Now we're going to turn it all the way out to there. And as you can see, that's at approximately 2,000 PSI, which is a lot of pressure. Now for most cutting, you, um, a pressure of about... You'll have to screw that T-screw in, by the way, and you'll feel it kind of stop. Usually 25 to 30 PSI works for most things, but you know, there's lots of charts online you can find if you want to know the exact pressure. Alright guys, now it's time for the acetylene. Now I forgot to mention with the oxygen, I just do it kind of out of habit, that you'll want to make sure this T-screw is backed out to where it turns very, very loosely and there's like no pressure on it whatsoever. And then it's pretty much the same as with the oxygen. Don't stand in front of the T-screw open that up. Now this only has about 100 PSI left in it, which isn't that much, but you know, it'll work for what we're doing here. Then we're going to turn this up. I usually go with about 7 or 8 PSI for most things. Okay, so these are the basic parts of the torch here. We've got these two little adjustment thingamajiggers, and these are flashback arresters. Basically, should the fire go back up into the tip and down the torch, it'll stop here before it gets into the hoses and then the tanks, because that would be catastrophic. So, we've got the one with the red hose going into it for acetylene, and the one with the green hose going into it for oxygen. And this lever here is referred to as you're cutting oxygen lever, which isn't what that says. But anyway, uh, basically, what you're going to do is you're going to make sure your green one is open all the way to the point that when you push this, you hear that windy oxygen noise. And then to light the torch itself, you're going to turn on this valve a little bit. Just open it to your gas and light it. And now you're going to turn this until that looks like that, pretty much. Okay, so we're back with Flame Adjustment 101. I put a Shade 5 lens over the camera, so hopefully you guys can see what's going on here. And we're going to light the torch again. So once more, you just turn on the acetylene a little bit. If you hear gas, light it. And this is the fun part here. That's a pure acetylene flame. It's really dirty, mostly yellow, the little blue up at this end. And to adjust that, we're going to turn this knob here. Like that. And now it's really loud because there's obviously way too much acetylene in here. So, we're going to play with that in the oxygen sump. And there's really no way to uh, tell y'all how to do that. It's really just mostly experience, which you'll get the hang of really quickly. Now this is what's referred to as a carburizing flame here, and that little thing going back and forth is referred to as the inner cone. And uh, you don't want any of that for cutting, so you'll turn the oxygen knob until that comes back to the tip and meets up with these smaller flames right here. Don't do that. And uh, then you're pretty much ready to start cutting stuff. Alright, so that's our nice adjusted flame right there. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to come and put the flame right on top of the metal that we want to cut. If it's an edge, you'll want to put about half of the flame over the edge and half, you know, not over the edge. And pretty much immediately you'll start to see stuff glowing there. And most of that's just rust, so we're going to give a quick little tap of this uh, cutting lever. Oh wait, it's ready to cut. I took too long to say that. Alright, you'll see this entire area underneath the flame start to glow orange. And when that happens, push the lever. And slowly just drag it across here.
just uh, hit it with something there. And there's the cut. Sweet. Okay guys, so the next thing we're going to talk about is cutting speed, or basically how quickly you can drag the tip of the torch across the metal and still get a decent cut. Now, you'll know if you're blowing stuff all the way through because there will be a massive shower of sparks. And if you're not going all the way through, then there won't be sparks down here and stuff will start flying back up out of the cut at you, which, which is bad. And that generally means you're just going too fast or your flame's too cold. And uh, if you drag too slow, you're basically just wasting your time. You get a much heavier coating of slag, which is this metal-like stuff that you're not supposed to chip with a torch, but just for demonstration there, it comes off really easily. And uh, yeah, if you're going about the right speed, you'll be going as fast as you can without having to, uh, you know, re preheat the metal up here. Now basically what's going on is the acetylene heats up the metal to a point where it's glowing red, and then you press the oxygen, and it puts a jet, uh, that's that metal hole in the tip there, it puts a jet of pure oxygen into the cut and it starts what's known as oxidation and when oxidation happens really slowly it's known as rust which is you know like this or what most people have on some part of their cars and uh, when it happens really quickly it's called cutting and basically the oxygen just blows clean through to steel and uh, knocks the liquid steel out of there with it so we're going to make a couple more cuts. I'm going to go agonizingly slow here and uh, show you all the uh, show you the excessive slag. And then I'm going to go way too fast and show you what happens when you lose your preheat. Or basically the metal ahead of the torch isn't to the temperature where it needs to be for the oxygen to blow clean through it. So light it. Turn down the acetylene. And adjust it. Add some oxygen, and we're good. What's this cut? This is the really slow one. All right. Now, you'll see if there's paint or rust on the metal, it'll start to glow. So just give it a little bit of oxygen, and it'll knock all that burning crap off of there and let you preheat the steel better. And you'll see the whole area glowing there, just like that. Now we're going to press the oxygen. Alright, that was our agonizingly slow cut. Now on the underside, there's just a lot of excessive slag and that took forever. So we don't want to do that. Now here, I'm going to start going again. Then I'm going to go too fast. And uh, you'll see what happens. It just plain stops cutting. Let me put my goggles back on. Okay, here we go. More preheat. This won't take as long because of the two cuts we've done already. That'll really warm up the metal. Now we've done a long time. I'm gonna go too fast. See how that's shooting back up? That means it's not going all the way through there. And in order to get going again, well, you'd have to start at where your cut diminished in quality, but I can start because this doesn't have to be a complete cut at where I stopped cutting. So you'll see it glowing again, then oxygen. And that just slag going back up into the tip. And we're going again. And that's pretty much all there is to that. Now that popcorn sound, like I said, is stuff going back into the tip. 
Usually it just comes right back out again, however sometimes you'll have to get what's known as a tip cleaner and I use those. And they like to break inside your tip and destroy it so you'll have to buy a new one so you have to be careful of that. Now let's say for whatever reason my torch goes out. Then that pop definitely means there's something in there. You can light it off of red hot metal. Just like that. Yeah, I've got to clean that out now, but oh well. And that's just sort of a handy trick to know. And anyway, well guys, that's, uh, that's your crash course right there. And I'd like to personally thank each and every one of you for watching this. And uh, I'd like to invite you to come visit my channel because I'm going to be making a lot of videos about this and Megan stick welding here in the uh, coming future. And uh, please subscribe if you haven't done that already. And oh yeah, you never want to leave this uh, without shutting your torch down completely, you know, in all the way. So let's do that. And you guys thought we were done. Okay. Well, basically, we're going to do what's known as bleeding the lines in order to get all of the uh, gases out of the hoses and the torch body itself. And basically, to do that, we'll start with the acetylene just because. And we're going to close this. And this should never be opened all the way because, you know, if there was a fire or an accident or something, this is the first thing you want to close. And, you know, if it's opened all the way, then it's going to take you a while. You'll be sitting here going like this. Meanwhile, someone's on fire or your shop's burning down or something. So you only want to open this about a full turn if you're actually going to be, you know, working on something because it's just faster to close that way. And once this is closed, we're going to turn on the acetylene valve here and, and uh, open this until we don't hear gas coming out anymore. And then once that's done, we're going to close it. And now we're going to come to this T-screw here and turn this all the way out until it's really loose. Now the acetylene's done. And oxygen's pretty much the same story. We're just going to close this bottle here. Now this one you can't open all the way. And then we're going to push down this cutting lever here until we don't hear oxygen coming out anymore. Now we're going to close this little knob here, which, you know, you don't have to open very far at all. And we're going to back this out until it starts turning really easily. Right about there. And we're done. Alright, now you can go visit my channel and subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching, guys.